Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back one and all to the zone where tonight ladies and gentlemen curtains have been drawn, blinds have been shut, it's the end of the day once again and guys I'm gonna literally level to you, I am so far from being tired I literally feel as if like I might just stay up all night long just because I can. But soon, you know, I, I might feel I might feel different by the time this is all over. I'll have I'll have uh, I'll retire to the depths for once again a long day's sleep. But for now, we have work to do. So, if you guys want to check out the original video for yourselves, links will all be in the description down below. Let's begin. Part nine in three, two, one, and. What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. It's hard to believe that we're already up to part nine and it's as long as this as well. Captain's Log, star date February 8th, 2009. Christian uploaded a video announcing his new website domain. The uh, Sonichu site is back up. It's at uh, sonichuandrosechu.com. That's where it is now. Uh, yeah, I've been under distress lately. Uh, the recent one where we uh, yeah, all may have watch the videos, re uh, last two videos before this one. Hmm. Yeah, I'm forced into doing that. I won't be repeating that again, uh, hopefully not. Uh, hopefully I won't be repeating that. Use that take. Anyway, also, uh, feeling the after pains from that, I find out that, uh, there's been some brush fire or wildfire, that sort of stuff. Fire going on in the southern Australia area where my sweetheart Sarah Cassandra McKenzie panned a halo <clears throat> she was uh, in that she was in that neck of the woods and I haven't heard from her in like uh, over two weeks and the fire's been going on for like uh, past during the past few weeks so I pray that she's still alive I hope she didn't die the fire. Sarah, if you if you are hearing this message, please let me know that you're safe. And also let me know. Can I still expect you over at my house? Or are you going to go to Clyde? Please let me know. Cause I miss you. I still care deeply about you, Sarah. Sarah Hart. Two days later, he posted a video in which he attempted to showcase that the promise he made to Clyde Cash about cleaning up his room had been fulfilled. For example, there's uh, more walking space. Look right here, there's definitely space between that and the bed. There, there's space in there for about one more frame of uh, video. <laughs> and you look over here. More walking space to the door. And I got that tub off the uh, top of my couch, so I don't fall down and hit anyone. <sighs> I had to leave the stuff, other stuff up there. But at least I didn't have to compromise much. But also, uh, after talking about that, and like, no, 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 no. <sighs> Clyde knows that I've kept my promise. Ich bin schwell, Julie. Ich bin schwell. Chris was under the misapprehension that the phrase meant I love you in Mulvanian, when in fact, it was the German equivalent for I am gay. I have <laughs> received in the mail today a letter from Nintendo of America in response to the piece I sent in the snail mail. It comes from Mike Chandler over there, no relation, at least as far as I know. It has Proving my my family and my congregations as well as my own theories. 
I shall read it to you from beginning to end. Mr. Shiguro Miyamoto did not have a meeting scheduled with you, nor has he been corresponding with you. Mr. Miyamoto speaks and writes only very limited English, and our game development teams do not accept unsolicited game suggestions or ideas. Although Mr. Miyamoto make occasional business trips to the U.S., he spends the majority of his time in Japan at Nintendo's headquarters. So, I was never in correspondence with Mr. Miyamoto or Reggie Phil Imes at all. They were imposters. I thought as much. So, there it, there it was. Black and white. From Nintendo of America. He later joined a mumble chat and recapped the latest developments concerning Nintendo. Well, anyway, it's, anyway, it's, an, it's an official letter, letter from Nintendo of America, because uh, the envelope is, 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 is just like the previous envelopes I got from Nintendo of America, as well as the uh, letterhead on the letter. Yeah, it's easy to forge. It was typed, and, and it has a signature on there. Just because it's typed and it has a signature doesn't mean it's real. In fact, wouldn't typing it make it even more yeah. easy to force since it's not handwriting? Later on, one of Chris's cats, Lucy, arrives. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. My cat, cat. Excuse me. Excuse me. Look, can I talk to the kitty? Yeah. Hi, Lucy. What the fuck did he just do? Did he just, like, just, like, pull, pull a wardrobe down or something? What the hell did he do? There you go. Two days later, convinced by Julie, Christian created a new section on his SonicChewAndRoseChew.com website called Sonichu and Rose Chew's Love Shack, which consisted of sexual imagery concerning his Sonichu characters. It was designed to be protected by an age restriction. Most of the drawings were simply pages from the Sonichu comics, but as time went on, he updated the section regularly with new renderings. On February 13th, audio of a sex- Again, not too sure why you would have to do that, but... Oh, whatever. I, 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 I'm done almost trying to come up with any reason to explain why on earth Chris would do some things like this. I just, I just don't. I don't have... I'm not, I'm not physically or mentally prepared to begin to give an explanation because I don't even know where to begin. Next chat on Skype between Chris and Julie emerged. During the 20 minute long virtual intercourse, Julie's voice cannot be heard, but it can be determined that they are role playing, with Julie possibly as a cat, and Chris as Sonichu. Sounds of Chris masturbating can be heard throughout. Oh no. I sent a few short static shocks up your, up your pussy. Not enough to hurt you too bad, but make you feel good. You're gonna get my milk, kitty cat. After Christian's climax, he is heard drinking a carbonated drink and consequently belches. Excuse me. Might say I'm burping because uh, I quite enjoyed you and your juices. On the same day, Christian took part in another mumble chat, during which he reveals the idea Julie had for a video. It's basically a video of me standing up to Clyde and showing him how strong I am. Doing a few kicks for the camera. Or yeah, you should pull some punches. Show them what you're made of. You know? I, I pretty much already proved my strength when I ripped that dildo in half. Chris tells a fan that the original. No, he unscrewed it. Why he has a dildo in his house? Again, I'll leave up to your imagination. She came for quick pick, was torn up into small squares, and placed into an envelope. Why, why did you do that shit? Like. And, and, well, and I understand like, rose at you, but like, you know, why something that's from real life? It's not necessarily from real life, it depends on your interpretation. I mean, it's hardly, I mean, most women have long brown hair, and the eyes are censored, so... Most women? Yeah, but I remember that one video you were saying is Megan. Because in the end, it broke up my friendship with Megan. On Valentine's Day, 2009, Chris and Julie had another sex chat together, much in the same vein as the one a day prior. Okay, I'm looking at pussy while you're sitting on my face. Yeah, don't be surprised with what's gonna happen. What what happens next, apparently, is every male teenager's worst nightmare. I think you know what I'm thinking about. 
except it's Chris is 27 years old at this time. Trolls were made aware of the cybersex session taking place, and some decided to make use of that knowledge. While Christian was masturbating, four calls were made to the family phone by trolls attempting to convince Bob to walk in on his son. The first three callers were dismissed by Bob, who told them that Chris was sleeping. The fourth caller exclaimed that Chris had posted a video on YouTube saying that he was going to kill himself. Understandably concerned, Bob went in to check on him. Christian, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm getting all these crazy damn calls. What are you doing? Nothing. Give me that crap. Now, what's going on? Dad, will you get out of here? No, I will not. People tell me that you're about to kill yourself on YouTube. What? What is your trouble? I'm not going to kill myself. Get away from that TV. Fine. Get away from the internet. I'm cutting it down right now. No! Dad, no! Yes. No! Don't do it, Dad. He, he he talks to his dad literally like like a child was. No, dad, no. Like this is his freaking. How old was was Bob at this time? This is his uh. God, am I, how 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 old was Bob at this time? Was was he like early eighties or something at this point? Yeah, he must have been early eighties because, yeah. Come on, shut this thing right down. No. Yes. No. Go wake your mother up. Don't bother me. You tell them what's going on. This thing is going to go down. No. Yes. No. Due to Bob creatively proclaiming that he would cut down the internet, trolls became inspired by his quote and began referring to him as the internet lumberjack. After they were disconnected, Christian called Julie again, telling her what happened. Hello, Julie. Yeah, listen, you'll have to talk to me. I'm calling you from my PSP. It does not accept type feedback. I told my mother about you. Yeah. Uh, she says she'll believe it when, uh, when she sees you in person. What am I going to do now? Mm, well, pretty much my uh, erection has uh, been unmoved. And I'm not feeling in the mood for it right now, but, you know, hey, from the bright side, we still had our Thunder Valentine's Day date. In my, in my big planet. Two days later, Christian found out that his aunt Karina was in a very ill state, and it was very likely that she would pass away soon. Later on, Chris and Julie chatted on the PlayStation Network, where they discussed his aunt's condition. Now, yeah, I might have to go visit aunt Karina this weekend, but she did not invite me along because I need to stay home, help the, uh, you know, we get my father, and take something happens to him. And I got mad to get a cat. Yeah. She also addresses his job prospects, with Chris claiming that he would look for paid volunteer work, and Julie questioning his use of paid volunteer work. Not entirely sure if the, that's uh, technically a real thing, but actually no, I, w I won't say never mind, but because we all know that's not a real thing. That's not how that works. The word volunteer. The next day, Chris and Julie had another PSN chat covering many of the same topics. Uh, so, hey, Mom, be sure you listen to the way to go see how friends might so I give her the last hug. Christian, she won't even know you're there. She knows you're Yeah, well, at least I was able to give her, give her my last I love you when I called her the other day. That's right. That's all she wants. Yeah. All right, Mom, I'll talk to you later. Did you get that, Julie? Yeah, could you ask your mother if I to talk to her? <laughs> You spell summon Snorlax. Hmm. Listen, I'm talking to Julie on the PSN network. She wants to say what they allow to you. I'm not able to talk to you. Uh, is she emotional? I am not able to talk to anybody right now. Will you leave the room? Uh, thank you. I'll see you later. Someone failed. <laughs> Julie encourages him to make a video with one of his inflatable sex dolls. What about that ball doll? Don't you have like two of these? Oh. The uh, blow up doll. Yeah, I did have two, one for backup, but uh, like a few weeks ago, when I was, uh, when I was doing a thing with it, it got an internal injury and uh, it deflated. Aw. Uh, wait, how did it get punctured though? Was it punctured with your. You know, too much uh, crush, too much uh, humping force, you might say. Oh, if you're willing to call it that. Or, like, you know, possibly some weight. But, you know, I had a good run. 
Chris, you know what you should do? Hmm? You should try and make that video, you know, of you doing your thing with Wall Talk for me. Alright, I'll make that video for you tonight. That took literally no convincing whatsoever. Later that day, Christian took part in a group chat on Mumble. I can't wait to the Christian chat. It's bad. Well, take a deep breath and accept it, because it's real. A little while later, he talks about how he recycles his semen. I have this friend, I think he might be gay. Um, I know, I know. That thing's unmasturbating, he drinks his own semen. Is that gay? Uh, no. I don't think so. I don't think so, because, uh... I've done that. I, it's called recycling it. Right. Wait, then answer. Basically recycling, so it's like uh, he doesn't necessarily have to lose it. I mean, because, you know, you think of it as a waste. If you uh, you bang it out, and then you uh, and then you put it in, mean, it's like you flush it down the commode or leave it in the uh, condom and put it in the garbage again. Oh. Is it spread is <laughs> by stomach acid? Yeah, 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 but still, still. It's fuel for the new sperm cells. That's not how that works, Chris. Sperm isn't... Sperm is not literally created through, you know, through the energy what you eat, and then it's it's uh, produced in your... in it's, it's, uh, Sperm cells are produced in your testicles. It's... Again, this is where... Forget dating education. Somebody should just teach Chris about how anatomy works, because... Clearly, he has absolutely no idea what, what any of it, any of it, what any what what's going on. Plus, also, I've learned on the internet that there's vitamins in the in the sperm cells as well. But so it's like uh, basically you're helping yourself when you do that. Although, first, although personally, I've kind of, kind of sick of uh, spawn on my own. So lately, I've just been disposed of them. I mean, it's. Um, it just depends on, on your own individual say, say. Chris discusses the prospects of a threesome. My name's Emily. Oh, hi, Emily. I don't understand why you're still saying that, honestly. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we all know why. It's... Remember how I keep quoting uh, the Paul Weller song, uh, Changing Man, The More I Know, The Less I Understand? No. I think we know and understand why. It, you, I think Emily's right. It doesn't take a genius. Oh, I am in love with uh, Julie right there. Who just uh, spoke just now? Oh, she she sounds like she's really pretty. Maybe we can have threesome. <laughs> oh wow! Chris also tells Julie that he would be willing to participate in a threesome with another man. The other members of the chat responded by accusing him of wanting to engage in homosexual activity, but he defended himself by stating that it isn't gay as long as their testicles do not come in contact with each other. Uh, yes, I would accept a threesome with two women. Well, thank you hear that, Emily? Uh, after Julie and I have done a few times, we can invite you. That'd be really cool. I mean, we can go shopping at a sex store beforehand. Um, yes. Um, it's me, it's certainly um, Hi, Sarah. I, I thought you were going to really, really truly to the person. Oh. I thought it was going to be special. It can't be special, Sarah. It can't okay. be. Okay. I'm really upset right now. I feel like you don't care about me. Sarah, I do care about you. I'm sorry I upset you. Thank you, Chris. Emily asks a question about genital piercings, referring to penises by the euphemism ducks. Would you ever get your duck pierced if your sweetheart thought it would, would be really hot and would improve your sex life? Oh, no, I would never have. I no. feel like it, it can increase no, the I, pleasure. I, even that considering, I still would not get any piercings. Wait, yeah, what's a duck? It's like replacing the I with a U in the word dick. So, so euphemism. Euphemism. And then you spell it Y-O-O-P-H-I-M. Yes, yeah. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Julie asks Chris about his penis. Can I ask you something, Chris? Yes, Julie. So that down there, your duck I don't mind talking about what is it? Well, it's a little bit like Nope. 
absolutely fine. And no, you know what? I'm going to answer Chris's question as well. And I think I might have covered this in the uh, the Chris at the Hell thing before. But no. But I, I generally don't know if it's, it's meant to be like a scientific explanation. Or maybe it's just from Chris's lack of showering. Maybe... I, or maybe it's just so small that... Uh, there's there's too much skin so like grown over it or I, I generally cannot answer the question because I don't know whether I've covered it before or whether or not there's now nah, there's got to be some explanation maybe Chris just you know uh, you know where uh, release the valve one too many times and it's uh, an irreplaceable part well maybe because I've been wearing briefs on my life and that uh, could have uh no, that's absolutely not what what Chris. Uh, I don't know. Chris, have you ever used the biggest one? Yes, I have. But I but my penis has already been downward before I used the pump. Or on the back. I never took Viagra. For the record, I did not take Viagra, I took extends. And my dick was that sour before I took that as well. Why did you use the pump in the extends? I always felt like my dick could be longer. Yeah, those don't actually work. They can actually cause damage to your penis and cause it to bend. What, the pump? I think we're just uh, good to know we finally got an answer. Yes, yes. Well, for the record, mine does go up to a maximum of seven inches. Well, it doesn't matter if it's fit. Well, you use the tape measure. I use the ruler. Yeah, first I guess the uh, bent part to make it straight. So it does go a maximum of seven inches in length. Yeah, my dad was a doctor. He always told me to stay away from those things. Christian and Sarah May get into a heated argument because Julie had second thoughts about her involvement in a possible threesome scenario. I swear, I will not uh, have sex with Sarah May. It's not fair, Chris. It's not fair. Why would you do this to me? I didn't know back then. Sorry. I feel so broken right now. Julie and Chris agree that adultery is frowned upon in the Bible. Well, I, I mean, I'm Jewish. Is, is that okay? Oh, you're Jewish? I did, yeah. not know, I did not know that. But, yes, that's okay, Julie. I was really afraid that you would get really upset with me. No, it's okay. I'm not upset with you, Julie. And I accept the fact that you are Jewish. And I accept the fact that you are Jewish. Just, wow. I, so the, some of the things that Chris says, even when he's just saying, thing, saying them casually, and he's not, and there's no, you know, secondary thing, just, wow. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, Offer an input. Uh, to, uh, if I heard correctly, uh, people who are Jewish were not supposed to have sex outside their religion? Yes, some people believe that, but not all of them. Do you believe in it? Yeah, I, I think as long as the people love each other, then it's okay. Both and Julie, you are right. Christian calls Sarah May by the wrong name four times in a row. That was me, not Julie. I, Why are you calling me Julie? I know. I said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you pretending no, that no. I'm Julie? No, no, Sarah. No, I'm not. Why would you do that to me? I'm sorry. It was an accident. How could you make it a stupid accident like that, Chris? I'm not perfect. We're not perfect. We're only human. But we have rights to make mistakes. I am a mistake. <laughs> But it, it, it's just like when you're having sex with somebody and you scream somebody else's name. Do you know what that would feel like? Do you know what this is doing to me right now, Chris? Uh, Sarah, I do understand because I have seen that situation on television. What? If, okay, question. What if, for example, you have it? You're you're having sex with someone, but they also have a twin sister who is also the called Sarah. That just seems. Very, very specific. So you got Sarah May and Sarah May. One has an H in it and one doesn't. Actually, that that was so clever of me. I'm actually going to write that down and use it in a bit in a bit later on. Thank you, me again. 
Sarah May threatens to kill herself. the chat ended, Christian made a video addressing his concern for Sarah May. Sarah, I feel terrible about what about the big mistake I made in that in our conversation. I hope you don't do anything stupid. I pray you're still alive and well. Because if you killed, if you committed suicide or hurt yourself because of my actions, I just I feel terrible. I care about you as a friend and you are a sweet friend you are a sweetest among my sweetest friends that I have made in my lifetime and I I just cry I lost you <laughs> hopefully I'll get to talk to you again soon I love you, sir, May. As a friend. I love you as a my friend. Immediately after. He didn't even fucking say that he was sorry either. Motherfucker. I'm gonna count this in the ever-growing list of videos in which Chris tries to apologize, but he doesn't actually say sorry. Because, you know, that's what anybody else would do. Also, yeah, I friggin... He d his 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 lack of compassion is almost nauseating about literally everything to be honest but they are he made another video talking about the choice language he had used concerning homosexual men possibly as a response to allegations of hypocrisy emanating from participants of the recent mumble chat captain's log star date february oh shoot february 18th 2009 <laughs> Forgive my sniffles, I just did video dedication. I just wanted to make a statement. A retract using the ever using the word hate um, among the uh, gay populace. I I I was under a lot of stress and I'll admit I made a bad word choice when I used when I picked when I chose that word. I am capable of associating and being friends and respecting all gays. I'm doing this on my heart. Believe me. I don't believe you, but, Chris. Hey, but, you know, beyond respect and uh, friendship, no. But I do not hate the gay population. The following day. Chris and Julie met again over PSN, where they discuss the voices Chris hears in his head. I also uh, get banned in audio and word thoughts in my, between my audio and my philographic memory, where uh, it's like, you know, other people saying, Christian is gay. What did I say? Christian is gay. Do you really think you're gay? 
No, I do not. I'm straight. When questioned about the dubious sex toys in his possession, Chris responds truthfully. I put a condom on the uh, dildo and I actually did put up my uh, a-hole. Uh, in my humble opinion, uh, it just did not feel right to me. Wait, did you tell me about the beats? Yeah, I put them up my uh, a-hole uh, the one time and I uh, uh, didn't really know how they worked, so, uh, and, you know, I just, like, you know, was, like, winging it and uh, it didn't really uh, turn me on or anything, so well, I pulled them out and the, and the string and the beats were covered in food, so I put them in the trash can and forget about them. Chris? Yeah. That's gay as Thank shit. Thank you for telling me this. I'm happy that okay. you're able to share these secrets with me. <laughs> I mean that as in I'm happy that we have a trusting relationship between you and I. You see me smile because I'm smiling. I can see you smile. I truly love you, Chris. I love you too, Julie. After a lengthy chat concerning Chris's sexual activities, he okay. disclosed... I I've been using these wrong then. Nah, forget it. That, that joke took so long to actually get round to getting my rosary beads out. That was absolutely not, it was not worth the wait. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Closed his PSN account password to Julie. Later oh. again, Bob joined the chat, inquiring about her home country. Here's my dad. Hello. Hello. That's, that's uh, Julie Novania. She came all the way from Mulvania. Mulvania. We were just looking at it on the map. It's next to... Uh, Former part, probably the former part of the former Soviet Union, the USSR. The gypsy country. Ah. You have any gypsy violins there? Yeah, I see. Because the thing is, I, I quit a while ago, Chris, because it just, I don't know why. People doubt Mulvania so much. It's uh, Well, it's the whole countries keep changing. Can I keep telling Chris? I've been around for 81 years. And I've seen this world change a lot. And it's hard to keep track of which countries or what countries anymore or what they were earlier. Very few people, particularly in this country, really understand the makeup of the world. I have been very interested in the world since I was 10 years old. I'm very fond of and I really truly believe in the United Nations. But you won't find anybody else in my countryside around here, I think, that does. But anyway, I'm, I'm very world conscious. Yes. And I've tried to train Christian, but it's awful hard for him to understand because he, he knows about Charlottesville and he knows about our little county here in Green and he knows about places that are 50, 100 miles away, but he doesn't really comprehend, I think, countries or cities or uh, anything that's, that's really farther away. Like, I don't think he really comprehends Europe or, or Asia or anywhere like that. And, uh, and uh, I find it hard to have most people think about that or comprehend that. Because I'm, kind of, I'm kind of a loner. It, it was an inter interesting life I had. But I'm still, I'm still much more world conscious than, uh, than I think most of the people in, in this country anyway. At least I, I think so. Yeah. You won't find many people like me around. I'm, 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 uh, since I've retired, which has been now for 20 years, I guess, I really haven't had much contact with people, so I don't get to talk about all this much. Yeah. I've, I've tried to teach Christian, and uh, whether he's uh, got any comprehension of the world or not, uh, I don't know. He had a tough time with Australia a few months back. I finally, finally got it through his head where Australia was. But I, I, I love the, all the foreign countries and all. So wait, apparently they went to Australia and Chris had absolutely no idea where. How long have we been going now? Freaking out, well, wow, now and that's new information for me. Where Chris had no idea where the hell Australia was. Did did they like? I know fine well they freaking live in a pigsty, but. Aside from, you know, not only owning a single ruler, do they not even own a globe? Do they know what an atlas is? Does this family know anything outside the world, outside of their own house? Or even Christian? Because I I'm, I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued about what Bob's saying here about being, you know, uh, someone who was... Uh, 
who who's has to be world conscious and i feel like yeah i i i agree i think it is very important to be uh to know exactly what's going on in the world right now and that's that's um, that's actually quite a profound thing to say, and I like the fact that uh, he's trying to tell, uh, well, trying to teach Chris, but I don't. Again, not really coupled with autism or anything like that. It's coupled with Chris's very low intelligence about uh, not exactly understanding what's going on in the world, or even how certain things are the way they are. Perform music, but I love music, and I've got maybe fifteen to twenty thousand uh, long play records of uh, classical music and uh, some classical music and jazz and blues. The recording abruptly ends. Hmm. On February 20th, a video called For Julie's Eyes Only, which featured Christian having sex with a sex doll Kimmy, was uploaded onto the porn aggregate Slutload, allegedly by Julie's brother, Max. Aside from his white socks, Chris is naked throughout. He uses the sex doll to simulate intercourse with Julie, calling out her name many times. After the video was recorded, he confessed to Julie that his condom broke during the recording and he had to replace it. The video eventually amassed over 3 million views. The following day, Aunt Karina passed away. Christian informed Julie about this over Skype and revealed that her funeral would take place on his birthday, which unfortunately clashed with a pancake dinner he was hoping to go to with his church congregation. He also began planning a trip to Julie's residence in Ohio. She convinced him to make a video professing his love for her. Chris delivered his 10 minute long offering with a pseudo Shakespearean panache. I love you, Julie, so very much. You are, you strike my thought at every moment. And it makes me, it makes me ponder with such love and desire. I love you so much. And uh, we yet have a similar storyline to uh, Romeo and Juliet. Only one syllable missing. Missing. It'd be like if we had that syllable, it'd be like Christiano and Juliet. But every night you can, cry, every night you may cry, Christiano, Christiano, where far out thou, Christiano? And I would be there in in your heart. For I, for my heart is with you. For if I call you out, for I would be there in your heart, and I would personally be calling out. I am here, O fair Juliet. Tis no, tis no word thy name be heard every moment, every waking moment. And Ju the sun is in the east, and Juliet is the sun. Though I know not much Shakespeare. But at least I know enough to get it by. Actually, I, I thought the line was that the the sun was in the west. Which there's a part in the very beginning of Romeo and Juliet where they said the sun sun set it in the west, which was supposed to signify that uh, a pretty important character of I think uh, Juliet's of uh, Juliet's family had died. Let me just uh, let me look up very very quickly the opening to uh, Romeo and Juliet. One second, you guys. Yeah. Uh... For God's sake, I, I swear, two households both alike in Fair City. Two households both alike in Dignity in Fair Verona, where we lay out scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From full from fatal loins of those two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured pirate... It's okay, it's not that. Sorry about that. And let's not forget my uh, past. My uh, past. Mm. I will only mention her once, but Panda, 
I know that you are somewhere up there after the fire, and we will not forget you. I promise you, Julie, that in the near future, hopefully with the power of God at our sides, we'll be together very soon. For the power of God can influence even the uh, most paranoid of souls, I'm sure. So I pray to him every night that you and I would be together with full emotional support from everyone within our reach, within our respective reach. I'm hugging you, Julie. Mm. Dude, he's got a freaking choker if he's not careful. Sorry, him. I'll talk to you later. On the same day, the Solitude Girl's form was revealed to be a ruse, the creation of which attributed to Clyde Cash. Chris confronted Clyde in a mumble chat. To Christian's surprise, the troll was accompanied by a veritable squadron of trolls who called themselves the Miscreants, who are all members of the PVCC trolling group. Welcome to the Brothers. Miscreants. Brother. Brother. Chris, stop this. Look. First off, I did that video just for Julie, and her brother found it on her computer and uploaded it to the YouTube without neither of our consent. Do you understand what the miscreants are? And her brother is part of it. He has been a very valuable member. Do you understand what the miscreants are, Chris? Let me guess, you're all a bunch of trolls, aren't you? No. No. Look. Ever since Evan posted those gay pictures with the masturbated and squirting, we have been there from the beginning. Do you remember Jason? Always a valuable member, always threatening to take the fall for me. Creating the ED page, getting your emails, he was a good member too. And can't you remember Blanca, the one who destroyed your medallion? Remember? Yeah. All part of the miscreants, Chris. And the latest member, Stella McKenzie, or you know her as Panda. She's not dead. She's alive at my side. Kind of sleeping right now. I'm going to be talking so loud. Anyway, I can't believe you fell for her. We've been here from the beginning. Do you know why, Chris? To try and make a slander out of me and a uh, fool? No, the goal is to make sure you never get laid. That is the goal of the mystery. <laughs> Virginia is for virgins. And the goal is that you are a virgin forever. I left you. Why do y'all have to pick on me like this? You don't care about women. That I do care is about women. He must be made an example of, of a horrible man, destined to never to ever have a wife or even girlfriend. Shut up! Why do you have to pick on me like this? You don't need to do this. Don't y'all have lives of your own? Can't you go find your own sweethearts to do with? Why do you think a sweetheart will solve everything? Look, I care, I care about the women for their own personalities. I can no, you don't. My life. No, you don't. Bullshit. You don't. You don't receive it. I care about their personalities, you you personalities you bastards. What? Yeah, tell that to Sarah and me. I'll just say that much. I, I, I care about their personalities. Care. You cared so much about Sarah, you didn't even bother to say you were sorry for what you'd done. That nearly caused, you know... Sarah to do what she did. I care about them, about how they feel. I care about everything about them. Chris, inside. you don't respect them. You only respect their cunts. Uh, what? what? You gotta respect the ladies, man. I do respect the ladies. No, you don't. <laughs> You're a fucking stars bucket, you stupid fag. What the fuck are you doing here right now, Chris? What the I hell? Origin, settle down. Uh, hang yourself, Chris. Kill yourself. Hey, hey, spare us. No, we don't want him to kill. No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Down. Settle down. Whoa. I got my Aunt Marina's death to worry about in her funeral tomorrow. You don't care. Oh, and I don't care. So much nice you don't care. 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 You don't I mean, we're basically just taunting, and we weren't actually, like, Tell him you know, well, 
Don't worry, thoughts? Chris will come back oh, no. when he realizes Julie's hey. in danger. Yes, what we should do is have, like, quote, Julie, unquote, be like, Oh no, my brother's like with the miscreants, and no, they're holding me hostage. Like my After brother. a short while, Chris indeed comes back. Look, I'm sorry about a lot of my past mistakes, about uh, not listening to everyone, okay? But I have been under a lot of stress. What is this stress? You the always stress. fight stress. Oh, the stress of this, I have a lot of stress in my life. My aunt Corina just died, and I have to, and I have to go to her funeral, and I'm going to be very sad that day. And it's happening. The funeral is happening on my birthday of all days. She must be more sad about her than your birthday. I am very upset about my aunt Corina. She was a very sweet woman. But you seem she to complain about it being on your birthday. I feel sympathy for my aunt Corina. She she smoked and she had a, and when she went to the hospital, she died at the age of seventy five. She her her, 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 her cancer deteriorated her left lung and her liver and her brain, and they kept her alive for as long as they could. So she until she breathed until she breathed the last breath. <laughs> she was dying. Let him cry, but he still, still does not excuse you for all your other past actions. Look, I'll admit, I'm possibly retarded, okay? My mind doesn't think so swiftly. I'm, I'm likely to even make mistakes on a fly. You know what, ladies and gentlemen? This actually could have been it. He admitted to himself something so honest and nobody would actually go on a record and say. Now, we know that some people say that they're retarded. They mean it jokingly, but Chris meant it sincerely. And I believed he was very sorry for what happened to Aunt Karina. I think he just meant it as sort of like, well, that's just a that's just a bummer. But it can't be anything from for you know, anything less than what he could be feeling for Aunt Karina. And you know what? He admitted he was dumb. He admitted he wasn't the brightest. And you know what? I reckon, you know what, with Clyde's... With well, Clyde giving basically a bit of, you know, tough love for Chris, maybe they could have reached a compromise. I don't... I think that this really could have been it. Maybe they could have told him about what happened to... You know, that Julie was going to do something slanderous against him. And Clyde and the other trolls were really quick to put down Arjun because they... They did not want Chris to kill himself. They were just... Playing into his hands, I guess. Without even realizing it. I sometimes don't even give thought to some of the absurd actions that I do before. I do, but I gave a lot of thought before when I moved from... Moved from uh, Panda to Julie. Because I thought she... Because I thought she had died that fire. As the miscreants continued to insult Chris... He was simultaneously chatting with Julie's brother, Max, who took over her Skype account. Max told Christian that he had kidnapped her and was taking her to the Miscreants HQ in Ohio, giving Chris five days to come rescue her. Look, Chris, this, this is the sad, sad truth. You are going to grow up and die in hell. I'm sorry to tell you this. Look, leave me, look, just, just shut up, leave me alone, leave me alone. We're trying to help. Leave my, leave my love life alone. Oh. Uh, I just think we went too far. That was a little. I but apologize I, for that, I, and I apologize for nothing. I regret even less. I, 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 anyway, I, I feel sympathy for the lower beings. I feel sympathy for the parents. Well, I feel sympathy towards Bob. Bob yes. would kill himself. Yeah. I feel the most sympathy for the rest of Bob. Yeah, was he really crying? Because I like. I like Christian returns once again to inform the miscreants that Julie was taken to their headquarters. Uh, and that's Julie's brother, pretty much uh, spirited away. Julie took her to the HQ, to the headquarters, where the uh, miscreants, I think they were called, are. And uh, now uh, Matt wants me to come over to Cleveland within the next five days to pick up Julie from the headquarters. And I'm just trying to find out uh, but Clyde is planning if he's uh, going to try to force me in jail or uh, hurt me or anything like that. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's very unfortunate. 
Mm-hmm. So listen, that's another thing that, you know, my mom, you know, my mom is like, you know, she's going to be telling me, don't go, don't go, I worry about it. You know, she's watched a lot of television. It's like I'm trying, and I've been trying to convince her to let me go to Julie. But then my mom is also a bit jealous of me loving of loving another woman more than her. I mean, I know, I mean, I understand she's in a situation like cut the umbilical cord, you would say, I'm sure. But still, I have to respect my mother very much. Hello, Clyde. Uh-oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. Sonic Hugh. Happy birthday to you. Oh, dear. Uh, have I been drinking? Well, anyway, uh, he's basically... He want me to test my love for Julie, and uh, yeah. he just want me to finally show that I am a man and uh, I can uh, stand up for myself and do what I want like a man should. And uh, that's uh, basically it in a nutshell, isn't it? Sure, that's perfect. Okay, well, I'll talk to my mom about it later and put my foot down, because right now she's sleeping and then I have the funeral to worry about. So after the funeral, I will talk to my mom and put my foot down. Yeah, okay. Well, majority of y'all take care and, um, you know, just mingle amongst yourselves for now. Take Wow. God. It's so fucking God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. He pulls another shit like he did with Redmond when he was like, oh, yeah, I just got back and now Julie's laying in my bed, but I'm not going to put her on camera. <laughs> After he left the chat, Christian began preparing for Aunt Karina's funeral and his eventual trip into uncertainty awaiting him in Cleveland, Ohio. Without a doubt, this would prove to be the most trying birthday of his life. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was part nine. Chris doing almost the most impossible things uh, today. Uh, the the video which is on slut load, I don't even know if it's even still there. I'm pretty. I wonder if like if the admins on slut load would have like took a record of that and just noted the circumstances because we all know what was involved during that whole process. Oh, who am I kidding? This is the internet. If it's not going to be uploaded on something like that, or even Pornhub, it's going to be friggin' out there somewhere. Uh, it's just, just, and listen guys, I like women myself, yes, but I, I, I friggin' don't. If somebody tried to, if, my, if I had a girlfriend, right, and she tried to convince me to spend the day with her instead of, you know, at, uh, at a at a funeral for a friend or another family member to tell her, you know what I do? I'd freaking dump her ass right there and then. And I, I'm saying ass way more than I'm saying ass nowadays, which is almost scary for me. <laughs> but the point is, is that absolute, when it comes to my family, you know what? Even, and and you know what? Well, I, 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 I was, I was going to say, you know what? I actually love my family. I love the family that are under this roof. I love my family that's, you know, my, my extended family. You know what? Somebody tried to tell me not to go to a funeral for any one of them. I would absolutely... No, I would dump... I would cut all ties with anybody who told me not to go to a funeral of that kind. Mind you, with that, with that being said, actually, the, few ta- the, the two funerals I have been to in my life... Very... I've had like very, very different and but very, very sort of like a little bit similar emotions involved in both of them. You see, I'm still blown away by the things that Bob said, and you know what? Him being honest and Chris admitting for himself he was he was quote unquote retarded. That just feels, you know what? That feels like one of the most sincere things I've actually ever heard out of Chris. And But you know what? And some of the things that Clyde have been saying has actually been quite sincere. The way he was reprimanding that guy, telling him to kill himself, was a very, very, actually, it, it, very noble uh, attitude to have, I, I felt. 
which only makes what's going to happen next very, very, you know, difficult to A, believe what exactly Chris does next and some of the things he says and does later on are going to be particularly hard to defend. And so with all that being said and done, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, part 9 of Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History by Gino Samuel. Please make sure to leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know you guys uh, thought of the video yourself and the quality of Gino's production. He does these, 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 this, the, this whole documentary series is one of the best. Now, also... Uh, I do know that apparently he was going to upload uh, part 40 on the 4th of July, and then he was going to take a little bit of a break, so there's going to be a little bit of a wait, but we can get pretty much up to speed by that time coming around. And I hope to love you guys again in the next reaction video. Take care. Bye-bye for now.